Welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo. I'm joined with Matthew with his fantastic movie, Black Griff Begins to Yawn. But for those that haven't seen it, let's take a look at a clip. Matthew, uh, thanks so much for bringing your feature uh, to New Filmmakers Los Angeles this month, and and thanks for joining us. Uh, I I'm actually curious about this question so much because I wonder how you describe it. But for those that haven't seen your film, tell us a brief synopsis. Uh, two scientists discover an old project from their deceased professor, and they start digging into it and trying to unlock this kind of cosmic mystery, I guess, is the general general run of it. I mean, oh my goodness, what a what a journey. Uh, I, 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 I was immersed in this experience that you gave us. And, uh, and trust me, the synopsis is one thing, but when you watch it, it's a whole different experience uh, on top of all of that. Um, firstly, where did the where did the inspiration come for you in, in, in turning this story, not just the story, but the style into a film? Um, we were, I've, I've just been interested my whole life in like conspiracy theories and uh, how far people go with them and people's beliefs being altered by them and, and the power suggestion. So I think I wanted to do something that was sort of a chamber drama with a very minimalist, uh, crew and cast and locations playing with, uh, people that are engaged in a possible conspiracy theory and their personal reactions to it rather than some of the more grandiose aspects that cinema goes to where it's like an action movie or like a straight up genre horror film. Um, I, I thought there were a lot more interesting moments in between characters interactions as their beliefs start to change or don't. Um, and also just how far people will go with certain things. So we were really trying to do a lot with a very minimal setup. And the idea, I think, for us early on became the style of it was more important to the way that the atmosphere and the tension felt than the need to just have endless expose to say, like, here's the story, A, B, C, the end. I, I mean, it, it's, it really is a fascinating film to watch. And I, I love I'm, I'm all about conspiracy theories and, and understanding that. But, you know, I, I really love the dynamic and the depth of um, the thought process and, and, and how it was shot and, and, and how, you know, you, you repetition and a moment. I just it was really calculated. Just it was really, really wonderful to watch. I'm always yes. curious when you're making a film with, you know, a film like this, um, how much of that is in the script? How much of that is developed as you work through it? Um, and firstly, big thanks to your, to your DP production design, because, you know, it really stood out. Yeah, uh, we went in pretty, with a pretty solid plan. I, I've worked with uh, the production designer, was also the producer and one of the leads, uh, Sarah Lynch. Is that amazing? Um, so we've got a pretty good shorthand already. As soon as I start developing an idea, she's sort of already there and we're just kind of spitballing visual ideas back and forth. All of my stuff comes from sort of a visual place first. And then the story I start to kind of patch together based more on the visuals I want to see. Uh, and so from the get go that uh, even the style of sort of the performances, these kind of slower uh like constantly early on it was me being like okay let's do that again but i want you to go like half the speed and they were already like i feel like it's dragging so slow already but i was like that's the idea here so i think those conversations where you're just sort of feeling it out as you go lila and i the way that we wanted to shoot it being very conscious of colors the way colors were going to constantly interact light bleeding sort of everywhere, kind of in a dream haze. Um, 
that's all stuff that we uh, chatted about really early on in terms of how we wanted to execute a very particular sort of vision. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it comes from my animation background. I like to go in really prepared to a production and not wing it as much as I possibly can. Wow. But then plan it so that you have the time to have fun in the moment if something happens. I, I love I love that um, you know during the process of of watching the film, um, you know I felt my imagination was being stimulated. You know I, I I was almost dreaming in your dream haze movie. You know what I mean? Like I was, yeah. I was in it, and it and it was actually quite quite a unique feeling. I was like, am I dreaming? Am I actually watching this? Like, <laughs> like I was loving it. Is that how yeah. you want it? Okay, good. Because I was <laughs> yeah yeah. I was never like we're, for me, and I think it's because of a certain type of dyslexia I have or something maybe where uh, if I watch movies that are just so strictly narrative and they're just trying to like make sure that you get everything and the expose all has to be very particular, I yeah. just start losing interest because I'm kind of just interested in the visual aspects too. And I, and, uh, I think that that becomes more my interest is conveying a story through visual aspects rather than through blatant dialogue that's like this is how yeah. the character's feeling this is what the character wants showing those things is more fun for me i think working with the actors that i worked with too they were very game to just do everything like through their eyes or just with like slight body movements and and they were really game to kind of go on the journey of slowing it down and making it feel very like like a lucid dream or like you're just drifting through yeah. some sort of slow fog so yeah, it was very collaborative in that aspect. I think we found the the flavor of it, the acting, the production, the sound design. I think we sort of all found that together as we were moving through it. So it was organic in that way. Yeah, no, I love that you 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 uh you know you've got a fantastic visual you know imagination that displays on screen, and you know I love you know the challenge that you kind of gave your audience as well of just you know going into this depths of lucid dreams all this kind of stuff that I, you know it's really really fascinating to watch what was kind of the most difficult aspect of, of making this film or maybe something that you kind of learned from making this film that you would you know look to in the future of making future projects one thing that i loved about the way we did it and i would like to carry forward is we were so meticulous in the shot list and like not getting any extra footage we didn't need so that when we were on location, we really didn't feel rushed. Like we were really able to walk through a scene as long as we wanted to feel out the space, change things if we wanted. And it was fun because it was like, usually when you make a movie, like my last feature, it was just rush, 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 rush. Like you're just going nonstop. For this, we really wanted to take the time to just kind of explore the space and stuff like that. That I would love to continue doing for going forward. The tough at the toughest aspect of this was just because it's such a puzzle and the script was such a puzzle that it was basically trying to get everything right because so much of what happens in the second half depends on the first half and it also they cross and form each other because it plays with like time and space. So trying to keep the puzzle pieces together while we were making the movie was the toughest part and like the edit took me two years to finally nail down. So yeah, was, that was like the biggest thing. Yeah, yeah. So I edited it for like two years because I was just doing it alone and trying to figure out how to make it work. And did you shoot this in eight days? Eight days. Yeah, yeah. The production was eight days. Four days in the winter, four days in the summer. Wow. See, everybody, you can make a feature film in eight days. You know, that's yeah. fantastic. And it was wow. incredibly cheap too. like, yeah, we we're told not to give the budget, but it's it's shockingly low. Ever, it has surprised everyone. It's 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 very. It was just a labor of love, which is my favorite thing about those types of movies. Like we all just were friends, and we wanted to make this weird art project, even even just for ourselves. Like we had no yeah. idea it would get picked up by Slam Dance or any of that stuff. It's it. I, I mean, credit to you, and honestly, credit to your vision. Um, now, sort of looking looking back on 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 on, on making this film, um, you know, obviously, I've given you a glimpse of the feelings I felt from it. What did you? Was there kind of a generalized or universalization of like how you wanted your audience to take your film? Um, I really wasn't sure. I, this is like the case with everything I finish. Um, they're often very polarizing projects. People either really love them or they really hate them. And I've gotten used to that with my stuff. Uh, so I, I kind of put it out there being like, there were certain people that this movie is for, they'll find it. And that's who I made this for. Like I, I made it for the people that will discover it. 
um, and connect to it. And I'm not offended by people who don't get it or don't like it. Uh, I understand a lot of their criticisms, but for me, it it's really just, I think if you make something that you believe in and like you want to make spending three and a half years with this movie, my assumption was uh, either no one will get it, but I'll get it and I'm fine with that. Or <laughs> it will find its niche collective audience that sort of responds to it. So, and it's been fun getting, you know, seeing both people that just did not connect to it at all. And then other people who have sent really lovely gushing, uh, you know, emails and messages about their response to the film. And on a weird note on that is also uh, like it played in Turkey last month at a film festival. Uh, they saw that slam dance and then they, they asked for it and it played there. And it, the first screening of there sold out and they had to do a second screening. And we have never encountered that in the U S with our film is usually the one that's like in the smaller art theater with the smaller niche audience, but over there, for whatever reason, they really responded to it and it got a lot of write-ups and like, and you know, it's like one of those things where there's like, you know, different cultures, but there's something about it that everyone responded to uh, that they connected to. So that was really cool. And it's yeah. just fun to see where things land. No, absolutely. And, you know, and, and, and well-deserved for all the attention that you'll get. I mean, I, I, on a personal loved it. And I kind of challenge anyone that is maybe not used to seeing a film of this style to just, you know, open your minds and go to the depths of why someone makes something or why a certain thing is a certain way. Um, you know, I think that's the beauty of filmmaking, but no, certainly, uh, I'm glad it got universal recognition because, uh, that that's really, really exciting. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely curious, Matthew, what is next for you? What is next on the horizon? What, where, which world or atmosphere are you taking this into next? Uh, next I want to do a pretty straight up genre horror movie. Uh, probably like it's kind of the studio level. I'm thinking, I'm hoping trying to be optimistic. Yeah. I'm writing outside of my budget, like for the first time ever, where I'm kind of being more aspirational. But yeah, that's, that's the next thing. And it's one I've been trying to write for about 10 years. So it's kind of, I'm finishing it up and I'm really happy with the screenplay for the first time in 10 years. Uh, so I'm, I feel like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to try and do this thing next. So fingers oh, crossed. Great. Fantastic. And you, have you got, are you working with similar team of people that you're working with or, or, or a new set of people? Yeah. Yeah. Some of them like definitely Sarah and uh, it's always, you know, it's always a fun idea to like, bring back cast you've worked with before and sort of re-implement yeah. them and stuff. But um, I also do want to do something bigger where I'd love to have like a casting director and because it's a bigger movie, there's a lot more opportunity to bring in a lot of fresh faces and maybe some established talent. So kind of because I've made a couple small films, I'm sort of now like, all right, I'm, I'm ready to like step into something where there's a little more machinery just because I think that's conducive for this new idea. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, listen, um, thanks so much for bringing your, your, your fantastic feature uh, to, to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. It's been a real, real pleasure. Uh, and thank you, Matthew, and just keep bringing your work to us. And it's been a real pleasure. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having us.